Should we get started? I think we're at 16.40 and depending on how many questions, we may be pushing for time. So uh, we'll make a start. If people come in late, it's not a problem. Um, good afternoon. Thank you for staying for so long to listen to uh, a vendor talk about their services. I promise to try and make this as interesting and painless as possible for you. Um, there is, with all vendors, a standard legal disclaimer. Um, there is words up there which talks about stuff which I'm not going to read to you. Um, yeah, my name is Chris Jackson. I'm a, a technologist at Rackspace. Uh, I've been at Rackspace for about eight years or so now. Um, this is my third OpenStack Summit. I uh, started off in Portland, and I've seen the, the community grow. I've seen the use cases grow. Um, I used to work as a, uh, a data center operations guy, building servers. Um, I've managed some of Rackspace's customers. I've been a, a solution architect for some of our largest customers building solutions. Um, my latest passion is cloud and DevOps, um, helping customers to put technology and operations together to make true value propositions come alive for, for cloud services. Um, in a, another part of this building right now, there is a, a talk happening called the Thunderdome. Um, it's likely to be highly intense and there'll be lots and lots of opinions and outspoken voices. Um, we knew that we were up against a very high profile session. We wanted to try and go beyond Thunderdome. Um, so this is the Mad Max sequel, um, where we're trying to give you guys some legitimate business advice to follow uh, that will help you on your journey to cloud to make sure you're getting all the right bits and pieces you need for your business to be successful. So as with the Mad Max film, we're going to uh, uh, make sure that in a world full of chaos, you uh, make that journey into icy obscurity, uh, come back to ensure salvation, and ultimately save the children, because that's what we're all here to do, to make sure we save the children. Um, for those of you that don't know a little bit about Rackspace, um, so Rackspace have been in the, the hosting business for quite a number of years now. Um, and we've been uh, one of the founders of OpenStack. And we've been doing the cloud piece now for equally a number of years. Um, back in July, uh, we made a small tweak in our message where we called ourselves the managed cloud provider. Um, since we started, it's been about delivering expertise and specialism and service uh, alongside technology. So having people to help you solve problems rather than the technology on its own. And when we're talking about Rackspace being the managed cloud provider, it basically means that everything you buy from us in some way is cloud. Uh, whether it's a dedicated server in a data center, whether it's a, a Rackspace private cloud running OpenStack, whether it's our public cloud, um, it's all cloud because our customers have been calling it cloud. Um, and when we think about management, we're thinking about high quality service and expertise on top of those things to help you solve actual business problems. Um, people talk about it before, but this concept of fanatical support, um, we're still a people-based business. Um, some of my colleagues are in the room. Uh, we're people that want to work with you collaboratively to solve problems uh, and to make sure that you're getting the, the right support for your business that's trying to grow and, and react to the myriad of IT challenges that are out there at the moment. Um, we love open source. Um, we've been passionate about open source for a number of years now because if you think about it, we're a, a people-differentiated service company. The last thing I want to do is sell you a piece of software with a license that then locks you in. It doesn't matter if my service is any good anymore because you're locked in by that license. If I build all of my services on open source technologies, I'm giving you the freedom uh, to consume our service. And if you believe it's not up to standard, you can walk away and you can build your technology stack somewhere else. Uh, most of this stuff is there on, on GitHub or other open source repositories. You can contribute and collaborate with us on the code itself if, if you want to, rather than just consume it. With OpenStack at Rackspace, um, having been a founder, we've worked with um, pretty much all the code through the good times and the bad times. Um, and these are the, the major pieces of our OpenStack portfolio nowadays. So we're production with, with Nova, with Glance, Cinder, Neutron, Heat. We've got active contributions around things like Trove, Barbican, uh, Solem. There are many other areas where we're starting to build out additional services. Um, but that's not really why we're here to talk today. Uh, we're here today to discuss a problem. Uh, the problem that I foresee and that I've seen with talking to many customers is that um, what's happening in IT right now is a battle on many fronts. Um, it's a bit like playing Risk. You've got multiple fronts open with different parties. It's a big challenge to really kind of 
keep on top of all the things you're supposed to be in charge of when you're running an IT organization. And the bigger and more complex your business gets, the more complex the IT becomes as well. And it's about conflicting goals. Um, how many people have been, in the last year or so, asked to deliver something both better and cheaper? Um, or I want it to be more stable and cheaper. Um, the expectation is that functionality and value are going up while costs are going down. And it is your job to magically make those things happen, please. Um, what we're really talking about here, though, and what's driving a lot of this is not cost, it's not stability, it's speed. And not speed in terms of application performance, speed in terms of things like time to market ability to respond to a piece of technology. So when a new thing happens, like Docker, or like big data happened, or like when cloud happens, the people that monetize that stuff and deliver it in valuable services to their customers are the people that can react quickly to new technology trends. Enabling that agility in your business is absolutely key. Uh, because faster means that faster decision making, it's faster cycle times getting value out to your customers, and it's also uh, reduced time to market. It should be a financial driver. You should better have a conversation with your CFO or your head of accounting about why these kind of investments in IT are a sensible thing to do. Um, it's also true that shadow IT is a constant threat and a constant challenge. So it's going to Darwin in IT technology. It's survival of the fittest, but actually it's survival of the fastest. Um, if you are not the fastest animal on the plane, you're likely to get eaten. Um, so what we're trying to do here is identify the things that make uh, IT services inside businesses slower and less valuable and provide that capability to them. So when you think about things like shadow IT, um, that is the story of how your users want to consume stuff. So if you're in a business right now where you've got an IT function, but a ton of people are using Amazon or Rackspace or Azure, look at what they're doing. That usage is the key to the things that you should be doing to provide a more valuable service to the business. Um, and if Gartner are talking about this stuff, then it probably means your CEO is as well. Um, so Gartner are talking about bimodal IT. The idea that uh, most IT organizations will have two speeds, fast and slow. And that by 2017, about 75% of IT organizations will have some sort of bimodal capability. Um, what that means is that you will have an area which is very cloud oriented, maybe doing things like DevOps, high levels of automation. There'll be kinds of applications and workloads that fit into that usage model. Uh, but there may be legacy systems of record that do not tolerate that level of change that may be t uh, delivered on other technology platforms. It could be a more VMware, it could be mainframe. Um, there's nothing that says you probably can't do DevOps on mainframe. I just probably wouldn't recommend it. Um, hands up who feels like sometimes they're doing whack-a-mole with IT. Um, on one day, it's social and mobile. On the next day, it's DevOps. And then you should be doing cloud. Um, and now we should be doing some e-commerce stuff. And oh, there's been an incident, therefore this is now the new most important thing. There are so many things that a, a business needs to do to have a world-class IT function that there really is no one magic one. It's finding the right combination uh, that suits your business and gets the blend you need. Um, anyone feel like they're doing this sometimes? Um, how many of you remember a time where you've done the ball right there in the far left? You don't notice it, but you dropped it. It fell away because there's so many things to do, so many things to focus on. Um, and this is where we get the IT paradox. The IT paradox says that your business wants you to enable it with IT and services and valuable things, yet you're stuck in the swamp of patching and updating, security and hardening, low-level maintenance, keeping things running. Um, you're there to protect what already exists rather than to build capabilities that serve. So if you're looking to evolve your IT, you've got to get out of the swamps and start walking on two legs. So this is about the journey of evolution that allows you to get to this right-hand side. And the way we like to think about doing that stuff is, I think the word platform as a service is horribly overused. Um, I'm thinking here about business platforms. 
a portfolio of services and providers and vendors that you outsource things to and you give them the accountability to protect and serve those things that you know are everyday and mundane. Freeing you up then to use your expertise and domain knowledge in your business and how it works and the relationships that make it run to deliver things that are more valuable, um, to enable and to serve. Because we might be a people-based hosting company, but I don't know your, be your business better than you do. Um, your domain knowledge is how to go deliver great services to your customers. It's our job to provide the, the back-end scaffolding that supports that. So I love an analogy in just about all of my presentations, and I get another geek life achievement today where I get to talk about Street Fighter and hosting in the same go. Um, hands up, who played Street Fighter 2 Turbo? Well done. Probably one of the best games ever written. Um, and we were talking about how to go do combos because combos are the great way to win at Street Fighter. You can pretty much get like 16 hits in and the other person can't get a hit back. Uh, you get the perfect score. And when you're thinking about combos, it's about assembling special moves. And the, you know, the people that played in tournaments with Street Fighter, they weren't just good at one character. They were good at lots of characters. They understand the, the pros and the cons of those different guys. And they knew all their special moves. Some of them were really complicated. Um, others were really easy and really frustrating. So there is a recipe for success by being e-Honda and doing the 100 hand slap like all the way across the screen. Um, but you also do need to think about having multiple things in your wheelhouse and multiple skill sets. So I'm not going to spend the whole time doing Street Fighter. I would love to. Um, I'm going to show you Rackspace's special moves. And I've even given you all the button codes to go do those special moves on your special DevOps keypads that I'm sure you all have. Um, we'll go through each one of these in detail, talk a bit about them a little, a little bit more, because these are the areas of Rackspace's portfolio which probably are the newest. Um, they're the ones that are most valuable when you put them together with other things. So I'm going to show you how to build combos using these different things. So start with hybrid cloud. Um, hybrid cloud has been around as a concept for quite a long time now. Um, this is about providing you with choice, your choice of performance. Do I want low cost per hour commoditized public cloud? Do I want a dedicated server that I know sits in a rack, belongs only to me with no APIs around it at all? Uh, do I want that because of security? Do I know that I have a certified application that only runs on a VMware-based platform rather than an OpenStack one? Well, that's OK. Um, do I want per hour consumption with no real discounts for commitment? Or do I want to sign up for something for three years and benefit from the, uh, the reduced prices I'll get around it? And do I get to control the architecture from a software, from a network, from a hardware, from a storage level to get the things my business needs? I'm going to unpick one particular part of hybrid, which is Rackspace's OnMetal service. So we launched OnMetal in the US uh, earlier this year, and it challenges what people think hybrid is. Because this is a, a dedicated bare metal machine in a public cloud. I use the Nova API to spin it up. It's based on all the stuff in Ironic. And I can use it per hour, and I can throw it away again when I'm done with it. Um, is that hybrid? because it's all public cloud, but it's mixing workloads between physical and bare metal and virtualized. Um, I think what we're saying hybrid here is now is a choice between a single or a multi-tenant API, for example. Do I have a private cloud where that API experience belongs only to me? Or do I have an API which is multi-tenant and many people can go access and use, but I can still make sure that the resources inside are on their own? Because uh, if you look at, for example, the, the on-metal I.O. flavor, um, it's a pretty powerful server. Um, it's probably more powerful than most of the servers we have in most customers' dedicated solutions. It's optimized for performance because we know that if you've got just those couple of boxes in an application stack that are responsible for a really meaty database service, you don't really want to have to go build out a whole different kind of technology. You want to use a cloud application. You want to have all the benefits of cloud without the drawbacks of having a virtualization, uh, a virtualization overhead on performance. So let's then talk about DevOps. Um, very close to my heart, uh, responsible for a lot of Rackspace's DevOps services. Um, and it's because we've got this perfect opportunity for DevOps. We've got internet business. 
where really if you're not online nowadays, you're not really in business. We've got cloud computing democratizing IT so that the world's biggest organizations are competing with the world's smallest on an equal playing field for access to computing resource. And then you've got open source, which is just powered choice. The number of things I can go and build an application with today that I couldn't do five years ago has completely changed the complexity of different customers' application stacks. And I don't think it's fair to say that we're going to drive all of that into classic IT management and expect them just to kind of pick it up and deal with it. That level of change in an industry requires a completely new way of managing IT. So the way we think about that is about enabling choice in something called stacks. So you build your application stack based on the components that we've written support for. So you've got a rich choice, you can combine whatever flavor of those you want. And as you build that stack out, you get the advantage of integrated services. So we'll take the time to integrate those components with New Relic or with GitHub, or with our Rack Connect services, so you can do things like auto-scale. And if it's in your business interest to move your web server from an Apache layer to an Nginx layer, you can do that really quickly and really easily, and all the integration is taken care of. There's no retooling work to be done. We're enabling choice and flexibility at the infrastructure layer to allow you to react faster. And the output of that is that if we think about IaaS being infrastructure on demand, I use an API, I spin things up. Um, what we've got now is application components on demand. Rather than you creating a server, which you then go do maybe automated or maybe manual provisioning of Apache and your configuration and your application, when you use this service and we dial up a web server, within minutes it's a web server ready to go delivering stuff back to your customers. So we're just completely taking away that area where we were asking you to do things yourself for provisioning. We can now give you the things your business cares about straight away. So data services. Uh, this encapsulates the, the big data movement. Uh, and big data is interesting for me because um, it's not particularly descriptive. You'd think that an adjective and a thing and a noun makes sense, right? But actually, big data can mean many things. So. Uh, we'll be talking tomorrow with CERN about a federation project we've been doing. And if you saw their keynote earlier, you've seen some staggering numbers about uh, data. It makes everyone else's big data problem look kind of small. Um, but they don't do huge amounts of analysis on that data. They just have to store lots of it. Whereas the NFL, the football league in the US, um, they keep 607,399 plays. Every single play in a game of football that's ever existed for the last... I think it's about 10 years or so. And that whole data set is 80 meg. That's a hugely complex data set to go analyze, but it takes, I can put it on a thumb drive, I can carry it around in my pocket. Is that big data? Well, the analytics and science are behind it, yes, absolutely. I just don't need multi-million pound storage arrays to go store it. So what we're finding is with big data, there's a lot of confusion and there's a lot of work to do to get stuff out of the ground. So taking it from servers to a platform that you can go run analytics and, and, and other scenarios on top of is a long stretch. You could be doing a lot of work on big data before you deliver anything back to your business. What we're doing here is building data platforms. So we acquired a company called Object Rocket. We've been putting more and more database services into Object Rocket. Uh, if you want to do MongoDB or Redis now, you can spin up a cluster on there with an API in a couple of seconds, you can be live loading data into those instances. We take care of the scaling, the backup, the sharding, the growth, the, the reductions. You just consume the service. So you can straight away skip to, OK, how do I go maximize this inside my business? We're doing the same thing with Hadoop. Uh, our partnership with Hortonworks enables us to do uh, Hadoop services in our public cloud as they spin it up and away you go start crunching MapReduce service, as well as availability on the OnMetal platform that we talked about earlier. That's a recent addition in the last couple of weeks. Again, don't spend time working out how to go build out a, a very complex platform. Use it, get your business interested in it. If there's a need to go customize it, come back to us. We've got the expertise, we've got the architects who can sit down with you and run it through. Digital e-commerce, this is kind of a, a no-brainer, right? Um, if you're here, you're running websites, you're probably doing some sort of digital or some sort of e-commerce. Um, but there's a growing trend now that says that just about everything has an online channel, be it for brand creation or for revenue. Um, and businesses are starting to recognize that this is a, a high-value channel. 
and the downtime in that channel, uh, loss of reputation, loss of brand, loss of features and functionality can all have material impact on revenue. And when that kind of hard connection to bottom line revenue starts to get made, the importance of this stuff goes up. <laughs> and there's lots of tools out there. Uh, you can go down the Magento, start open source and become more enterprisey. You can start at the ultimate expression of enterprise with Oracle and come the other way back. Uh, we have support for all these platforms within Rackspace. So rather than just talking to us about a web server or a database server, you can talk about the particular architecture you need to run a really good Hybris platform or a really good Magento platform. And here's what it looks like. So when you combine that expertise with the technology, we build you the reference architecture for you to go customize from. So let's use that as a start of a 10, find out how that meets your needs of your business and go customize it. And we can package those things in a heat template. So you can go deploy that using on metal, using public cloud, using private cloud with one click. You can give that to your developers and say, hey, go spin up new ones of these, play around with it. When I want to go make changes in production, I can make changes to my heat templates. We're starting to talk about combos here because you've got hybrid portfolio with heat templates uh, and knowledge and a specialism around digital. You start to talk about automation, you start to bring in DevOps. So we've got lots of these different things floating around. Um, how do you know which one's most important to you? Hands up, who thinks cloud's the most important thing in their business? <laughs> People from Rackspace would say that. Um, likewise for DevOps, I think you, know, you could say that these are maybe equal. Well, one must be more important than the other. So I've put some kind of guidance statements out here that says this is important, so hybrid cloud is important when things like security, location of your data, um, when infrastructure and architecture are business differentiating. With the DevOps service, this is around time to market, automated, the ability to do scaling. Um, if you think about the type of industry you're in, is it very spiky, very unpredictable? Do you need to be able to respond quickly? Those are things where you're connecting IT capabilities with the needs of your business. Um, data services, when someone has had the great idea that you should just stop throwing data away, and at some point, maybe one or two years later, they say, what are we doing with all this data? Um, how do you make a plan to go investigate? Because there's probably patterns in that data that would give you great insight into how to run your business. But getting the platform out to analyze those and expose those is a, is a different challenge altogether. And then digital. If online brand and revenue is a significant driver, uh, that should be a priority for you guys. And each one of your businesses that you work for will be unique. You'll have a different blend. There is no prescribed template for what order to put those in. It's based on the things you need. But if you are spending time listening to your business, understanding their priorities and their needs, you can reflect those in your choices. And when you pull it all together, let's say you're doing e-commerce with a need for automation, you want to analyze data, and you want to benefit from cloud technologies. Well, let's go back to the original image. You've got the business expertise to go run that local to your organization and your applications. But if you put together the services that I've talked about in this presentation, most of that stuff is there available to you to go start working from. We're helping you to build a business platform from which you can start to go deliver value to your customers and to your internal stakeholders without working out how to go build the base elements of it. So let's talk about a quick summary. Um, for this perfect score, um, there is no unique, uh, there is, every business is unique. There's no prescribed template. Um, were you going to share experiences with your peers and your colleagues? It's going to look different for different businesses. Um, you must assemble the components and then prioritize what you need to thrive. So think about the things your business tells you the most often. What's their biggest pain points? Why is the most compelling reason to use an Amazon or a Rackspace or a public cloud service over what you're providing as an internal IT service? Um, those are the reasons to do th these things first. Um, run the things that matter. So one of the most common pieces of feedback I get is that, oh, this stuff's new, it's interesting, I should be doing configuration management myself. Configuration management is boring. Um, it's just system administration done differently. And if you guys need to kind of go through a process of learning that, that's OK. But ultimately, you come back to the fact that I'll be better served by not doing that stuff, having someone do it for me so I can concentrate on the really interesting automation that configuration management enables. And finally, 
deliver more faster. So we talked about that kind of IT evolution. Think about the quickest possible route to get yourself out of the swamp. How do you stop being mired down by the the day-to-day, -day, everyday IT functions that you keep getting dragged into? So you can put yourself above that and have proactive conversations about new services and new things you're trying to do. Um, lean on people like Rackspace who can help you to get out of that swamp quicker. So what do you do next? Well, look, start building that platform. Most of these services are available in a, a Developer Plus scenario. So developer.rackspace.com, you can start to play around. We'll even give you £35 free every month. Um, you can start to talk to Rackspace specialists. You can have a conversation about these things. You can go with a credit card and sign up for Object Rocket, and you can be on your way in a couple of minutes. Um, this doesn't really have to be a really comprehensive and complex engagement until you want it to be. This technology is here for you to play with. Um, but if you do have time, stop by our booth. There's prizes and books and specialists. And if you come at the right time, there might even be beer and food. Um, and I think one of the things that we pride ourselves on as a managed service customer uh, company is giving back to customers. Uh, with that in mind, you can all have 15 minutes back. Thanks very much. Are there any questions? appreciate some of this stuff is unique to people's individual businesses, so I'm going to hang around for a couple of minutes. You're all welcome to go do other things. Uh, we'll hopefully see you by the booth. Thanks.